doing that. The main reason is that we're quite, quite constricted in terms of our curriculum and if I pitched uh, another global project to our, our teachers uh, they would kind of really struggle to find the time. So uh, by focusing on writing I would say well look we're doing writing all the time um, you don't have to change anything. This is just a different place where the kids can put their writing. So that worked quite well in that uh, the teachers didn't have to make any particular special effort. Um, in terms of why we value global learning, I'm guessing uh, kids are like this all over the world, but um, uh, I teach in a small town called Castlemaine in Victoria, and the kids are between 10 and 12 years old, and to them, their whole world is Castlemaine, and they don't really have a picture of of what reality is like outside of their small town. Um, I remember having a conversation with them saying, oh, we should try and organise a Skype call with an Indian school. And they laughed and they said, they don't have computers in India. <laughs> so um, we really wanted to sort of expose our kids to more than just what could be provided by our small school and our small town. Um, so with our Writers Club, we've got a... Um, a community of bloggers. Uh, there's uh, approaching 800 now, and they come from 35 different schools in uh, 13 different countries, I think. Uh, really what we wanted to do was to put the kids in control of the um, of the global interactions that they were having. Uh, I think in, in a lot of cases, uh, we as teachers tend to mediate the, uh, the interactions that they have from um, two other schools. Uh, what we really wanted the students to be able to do was to make their own connections based on their passions around writing. So um, some of the girls, for example, have formed groups with you know students from the United States, students from Hong Kong, students from Australia, around particular books that are good for female authors. Um, some have formed groups around crime writing. And so the kids are in control of these interactions. Because it's around writing, it's easy to fit in with uh, existing curriculum. Uh, there, there's no um, restrictions in terms of, we don't say to schools, you have to contribute this often, or you have to contribute this kind of writing. It's very open. It's just another way of, um, another place that the students can put their writing. Uh, so that's been quite successful for us. Uh, we, we started off uh, late last year where we only had a few schools and they were mainly Australian. But at the moment we're trying to balance uh, how we balance the number of students that are on there because we have to have a cap because of security reasons and the geographic spread. So, you know, at the moment we've got a lot of schools from the States, a lot of schools from Australia. Do we start saying to schools that want to join, well, you know, maybe you need to be on a waiting list, that sort of thing. Um, I, I, was there anything else you wanted me to cover? I don't know. You were, you were talking about, you were really excited when we were chatting the other night about just what Global Ed has done for you, I mean, or, or just teaching from a global perspective, how that's really changed you or, you know, impacted your, your thinking. So, you know, you want to speak more to, and, and also, have you, how, have, how else have you gotten your teachers on board too when, obviously, finding something that's relevant and easy for them has been important. Um, and also, how have you kept... Is the, is the openness really kept everybody engaged from other schools? How have you, how, how participatory, how many, how many schools are in it? 30, you said 35? 35 at the moment. Yeah, yeah. okay. So how many, how many of them are really active? And, and then the last question is too, how do you deal with people being in school at different times? Does it really matter? Because it's an ongoing project. Like your, your breaks are going to be different than ours. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, well, in terms of, um, how it's impacted me. I think the main reason has been that I've been able to have um, possibly more in common with collaborators around the world than I do in my own school. Yeah. Um, so I've been able to, you know, um, one of the teachers that I, I talk a lot about in depth about teaching and learning is a teacher who has just returned from Shanghai and is now going back to Colorado to teach. And I've not been to either of those places, and yet I have much more in common with her than I do with the teachers uh, in my in the town where I teach. Is that Tony? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, because she's uh, yeah. You guys did a presentation at the Global Ed Conference, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Tony and I talk quite often. Um, you know, uh, teachers in Mexico and, and um, uh, Pakistan and places like that where you wouldn't ordinarily think there would be an easy um, 
easy way to, to discuss education. Yeah. But yeah. Um, from my point of view, I've come to really value these colleagues as, as really important in terms of support and in terms of um, encouragement because it can be, I guess, a little bit lonely when you're the only one who's pushing global education uh, in, in your town, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, that from a personal point of view, it's really transformed the way that I interact with, with colleagues. In terms of the school's participation rates, they vary a lot. Um, some schools use it every day. Some schools use it far less. I think we would have far fewer schools if I made those stipulations and said, you know, you have to be contributing every week mm. or every month or, or something like that. Obviously, we don't want schools that are completely inactive. And so I'm still working out how we do that. I'm, I've only been doing global education for just over a year, so I, I would never call myself an expert. But I deliberately wanted to keep uh, the barrier to participation as low as possible for schools because I want to go beyond those group of educators that are really passionate and knowledgeable about global ed and technology and break through to that next level of teachers mm -hmm. who would give it a go if they had the right opportunity and, and someone to sort of hold their hand through it. Um, so th that's who I'm aiming for. I would love to see global education being something that was part and parcel of, of uh, a normal school day. And I can honestly say to our school it is. It's normal for our students to write on the Writers Club and receive a comment from China or from Mexico or from Pakistan or the United States or any, anywhere. It, it's a, a normal part of their school day, which is what we were aiming for. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how we deal with the different levels of participation. In terms of things like time zones and, and holidays and things like that, um, well, I used to have um, uh, sort of uh, chat conversations between schools uh, around particular debate topics, but it never really took off because uh, time zones were a problem, holidays were a problem. I kind of like the idea of blogs, even though they don't look as fantastic as something like this Skype call. Yeah. And we still do <laughs> these sorts of things. I mean, th these things look great and you can show parents and you go, wow, you know. But I think in reality, um, something that's not synchronous like a blog is a far better way to start getting into global education and, and things like the Skype calls and those sorts of things can be the add-ons. Uh, what we've found is that the Writers Club has become a lead into these sorts of things. So um, students have said, oh, you know, I've been reading this this student in Pakistan. He's a really good writer. I'd like to actually tee up a conversation with him about his writing. So rather than having a Skype call about something that's contrived, it's something that, um, that has come from the student's passion. I think that so really that, that, that speaks to this audience, I think, because I think we're all about authentic and student voice and it coming from the students. I think that's a driving part of the philosophy in a lot of these schools. Mm. Um, so yeah, go, yeah, really yeah. I have about. another question for you when you're done. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, um, yeah, it, it, that's really been the guiding principle is that beyond technology or global education or anything like that, for me really it's about personalised learning. We don't say to our students, um, you all need to be on the Writers Club because we know that there are students who are in our class that are not going to be particularly engaged by the idea of having their writing read around the world. Mm -hmm. So really it's, it's something for our really passionate writers and we hold it up there as something to aspire to and so we find that middle group of kids sort of lift themselves up to be a part of this. And they see the, the other kids go, being a part of this community and they, they want to join as well. So it's been really good in terms of our students being exposed to different styles of writing that they wouldn't be in the curriculum that we have in Victoria. Um, it's given them insights into... Uh, the cultural thing, so when some of the, um, there was a school in Shanghai that was writing about what they did on their holidays and they couldn't believe the sorts of things that they were doing, they thought they were making it up. Um, <laughs> uh, one beautiful story was um, one of our students at Castle Main, her grandfather recently passed away and she read a story that was um, very emotional from a student in Pakistan and that inspired her to write a story about her grandfather. And that would never have happened. And the teacher played no role in that interaction. And it would never have happened without something like the Writers Club to be able to provide that chance to be to inspire and be inspired. Okay. Now, the other thing that's really intrigued me has been um, the fact that I'm going to plug in my. Uh, if I plug this in, it's going to. We're getting echo because I don't have my headphones on. Sorry, but. No um, how have you? I you've really publicized this widely. Mm -hmm. 
how, what mm -hmm. are the tools that you've used and how have you gotten most of these schools on board? Where, where have you gotten the most bang for your buck in terms of getting the word out? Uh, some schools have found us through serendipity, I guess. Um, I use Twitter a lot and um, I have varying levels of success with that. Um, obviously, I'm on the global education Ning that you've yeah, set up, yeah, Lucy. Yeah. Um, I'm fairly uh, active on that. Yeah, your blog posts well, are awesome. We love them, yes. Possibly too active. No, um, no, 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 no. Keep it up. <laughs> um, uh, and various other sort of online communities. Um, there's also um, a Skype community that I've joined yeah, uh, through yeah. uh, Mike, Mike Graffin, I think his name is. Oh, um, yeah, he's Michael Graffin, yes. Yeah. And he's, um, he's someone who seems to know lots of people. And I don't have that skill. I think I'm good at sort of writing these blog posts, but I'm not one of these people who is a connector who knows heaps yeah. and heaps of different people. So I've sort of leveraged him okay. to be able to hook up with, with lots of different people. So it's been a real mix. But I think if I was to offer advice to... Uh, the participants in your workshop, it would be that um, you don't have to make all these connections. Link into these people who already have the connections made for you, and um, that's a great way to get started. Oh, okay. That's really good advice. Yeah, Michael's doing um, Twitter chats on Global Ed, and I think one. Mm -hmm. I think they just happened the last couple of days, and I've been too busy to, to jump in, but we'll take a look at that in a minute. What's your Twitter name by? so I can tell everybody? Is, uh, it's is, my surname, which is... Uh, uh, Zabaya. It's, 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 so the, the R is silent. So, by, I just want, so, so on your name, so here, let me go, let me bring up Twitter. It's for saying B for Bob. So the S on your name is silent. Or is no, it? Spiral. It's on. Okay, Sabaglia, so okay. Yeah. Make sure. are, you, are you Italian? By, yes. Okay. An, an Italian Australian. Yeah, we're quite common. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I Unfortunately, learned. Unfortunately, Spalio means mistake in Italian. <laughs> so whenever I go back to Italy, I always have these conversations where they say, oh, you know, do you know what your name means? And, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty awful. My wife won't take my surname. Oh, that's funny. Let's see. That doesn't look like, let's see. Where, is, where are you? People, where are There you. Is that you? There you are. And it's the same Twitter picture there. Okay, so there's so if you want to follow the a lot of these get, uh, these people are on Twitter or just got on Twitter, so you'll expect about three more people following you in the next couple of days because we'll be pointing nice. to you. Um, but at that, I don't think I'm very good at Twitter. I think um, I only have three hundred followers, which seems quite minuscule compared to some of the people that I'm dealing with. So, um, like I said, I don't think I'm particularly good at that sort of connecting work, and I get other people to do it for me. Yeah, and, and you know what? Having five million followers is no. I mean, I was just talking to somebody too that um, it's very easy to build up some sort of kind of reputation as being somebody theoretically important. If, you know, because people look at the number of Twitter followers, but mm -hmm. it really, it, it, it doesn't mean anything necessarily. So don't, so don't take it that way. Uh, I'd rather have somebody who who tweets. That in a valuable way than has yeah, five million followers. Quantity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to show people your site right now. Um, mm -hmm. It's under our workshop agenda, and here's your the the link that you sent me of the presentation that you gave recently. Mm -hmm. And let's see if there's a link here. In the top left hand corner, there should be a link. Right there to the writers club. writers club. Okay, and what should we know about your site? Uh, is there anything that we need? So this is how they log in. And you're using, what are you using for this platform, actually, out of curiosity? Um, this is hosted on, um, uh, I don't even know how you describe it. Is it a Google site? It's, no, no. It's, um, I purchased a domain, and it's been hosted by that domain. Uh, it's uh, basically just, it's based on WordPress. Oh, and okay. It's a, a multi-site WordPress, but the really important part is the what you're looking at at the moment, I think, is the um, the social network interface. Um, I think I wrote a blog post recently about the problem with blogging. I mean, in theory, anybody can start a blog and, and have a global audience straight away. And I've got, been blogging for four years, but the problem is you have very few people commenting on, on your work. So yeah. the problem is, if you're a student, how do you find the work of others and how are you, how are you found and, and commented on? And so this is an attempt to solve that problem because if you click on uh, up the top, there's a um, there's an orange square that says what's happening. Yeah. 
and that gives you a feed of all the things that, that has been happening in the community. Oh, okay. So, so somebody so can subscribe to this in a newsreader. You don't necessarily have to... They don't have yeah, to that's right. go to the I can website. See what, and where it says show, and there's a little drop-down menu, you can say, just show the posts. So you can just see who's been publishing. So it makes it very easy for students to find the work of others and to be found. Okay. So this is... So you're using BuddyPress and WordPress. That's correct, yes. Okay, and BuddyPress is the social network piece of it. This is cool. Mm -hmm. This It reminds me a little bit of... Um, you could use a name like what I have for my community. You can get free names for students. By the way, that's another alternative. Um, there's a school in New York that I know of that it, it's one of my favorite schools that has an internal social network for its its kids and they use something called ELG which is an open source software but they have like a program around staff who can tweak it. Um, but this also reminds me Rob of um, one of the women I worked for at U of C uh, is a researcher in digital media and kids. Um, her name is Nicole Pinkard and she there was a laptop program at these charter schools and all the kids mm -hmm. not their keystrokes but what they visited and what they what applications they launched and that sort of thing was recorded in their laptops mm -hmm. and sent into a database where she could analyze it and so they mm -hmm. could tell whether a kid was a gamer or was a digital me media creator or what their or you know what their their profile was in terms of using the technology um, okay. and I would and I, I was just saying to some people the other day where you know we keep on talking about measures of student engagement uh, we want. We keep on talking about student engagement, but there's no real measure of what it seems of what student engagement is. So having seen how kid, you know, how frequently a kid posts, or the time of day that they're posting, if they're doing it after school, it can really tell you. That's data that can be used to inform you about a kid's progress and involvement and engagement. Um, so anyway, this is really, really, really interesting to me. Um, Okay, so are you so are you taking if teachers wanted to get involved for the coming school year? Would you be willing to entertain some more middle school people from oh, of course. from the U.S.? Okay, absolutely. Okay, um, there is a, on the homepage there is a little um, sign that says "Joining the Club" and there's a Google form that teachers can fill out. Um, I'd also uh, recommend that teachers read the frequently asked questions. Okay. Uh, I guess one of the problems that I've had is, is really communicating what uh, the community is all about. And because a lot of projects out there have very specific timelines or very specific purposes or um, guidelines in terms of how often uh, they contribute, it, it, this is really a, a lot more free in terms of how often the students can contribute, uh, what they contribute, that sort of thing. I think that's really, really important. Um, because I don't think the force works particularly well. So, um, and, and the safety, I'm looking at here and you've, you've, met, you've talked about the safety pieces in here and that's really great too. So, mm -hmm. so hopefully people here, does anybody have any questions for Rob? That's the other thing I wanted to ask. Do you guys have specific questions for him um, about his work, about the Writers Project in general? Uh, maybe we covered everything, it's I don't amazing. know. <laughs> it's amazing. They all think it's amazing. That's good. I think it's amazing um, when I think about when I was at school, how fantastic it would have been to, uh, because I was into writing, yeah. uh, how fantastic it would have been to have your writing read all over the world. Yeah. And these kids can do it and, and it's easy. Now, and so that's really what it's about. Yeah. I, I, yeah it's a, and I, I guess the, what came for me in, in when I was traveling in 2006, I was realizing we have the technology, we have the capabilities of doing this now. Why aren't more schools connected? It just seems to be like a no-brainer. But I think there's still a lot of room for evangelizing that. Um, are there any plans to do any more projects? Is there any other natural area of your curriculum that you've seen that might lend itself to this kind of thing? Are you thinking about taking anything else on? Uh, well, the, uh, the big dream, uh, my passion really is science. I used to be a scientist. Okay. And so I've got an understanding of how scientists work in, in real life. And um, they're often well, they're always collaborating with other scientists and, and working across yeah. the, the globe. Um, on the Writers Club, there is a link towards the bottom that says um, our sister project for student scientists, Science at the North School. Um, I'd like to, well, I already have created a similar uh, community, which doesn't hasn't attracted the same numbers, but where students could 
uh, put up their work in terms of they might be designing their own experiments and get feedback and, and seek help from real life scientists. We've done this on a school level where our students have designed their own experiments and they've had real life scientists come in to the, the, the community and the kids themselves have teed up Skype interviews. And, you know, they've, they've said, oh, you know, I, I need to talk to you, Dr. Crystal, about my experiment. Are you free at this time? And, and she would say, oh, you know, I'm, I'll be in the lab, but then I'll, I can be free at 2 o'clock. And so really in terms of the skills that we're giving the kids there, in terms of them controlling the interactions with these experts is just fantastic. So where we'd like to go next is to have that happening across the world, having scientists working with students in Australia, the United States, Pakistan, China, etc., etc. Okay. So that, that's the dream. But I think science is a bit more difficult because it has, it's not as ubiquitous as writing. Um, with writing, we can cover any... We've got students from grade 2 up to year 12. Um, with science, I know science is quite neglected here in Australia at the primary level, so it's been difficult yeah. to get to get uh, teachers on board. I think it's, it's the same here, and I also think teachers' knowledge of science is... I think mm. people are very... Um, nervous about teaching science unless they're a scientist mm. to begin with. Um, mm. And we see the same kinds of issues here. I think data collection activities would be really cool. You know, and, and I would love to see some sort of mechanism for kids to collect data and have it go into, I don't know, Google APIs and they'd be able to manipulate and look at that data and understand it. I don't, you know, mm. that kind of stuff. But I And I know a lot of people have toyed with the idea, but there hasn't been, I haven't seen anything done out there yet along those entirely so mm. but yeah are you familiar with journey north? no journey north this journey let's, north let's look is at that an american project um centered yes in north america but involves Ooh. various data collecting things for things like migration of monarch butterflies growing tulips i know at least the tulip one is worldwide. I know there's an inherent problem because, you know, seasons are different more than in the Southern Hemisphere and that kind of thing. But that may be something that you want to look into because they seem to be reaching out more for an international audience. Oh, and, great. Uh, they have some great kind of database kinds of things. I've done the Tulip Project with them off and on for uh, you know, six or seven years with, with some gaps in between. And they actually have 20 years of data up to the point where uh, they can actually start showing the effects of global warming. Wow. Uh, wow. You know, so they've, there's some pretty impressive stuff in there, and I don't know the half of it. So it may be this just a source, you, a source that you want. If you're looking for the science part of it, uh, that's something you might want to consider. Oh, wow, this is a great resource. Mm. Okay, I'm liking them on Facebook. Which, uh, Facebook has become another place where I get a lot of my news. You're very stuff. fast with that stuff. Mm -hmm. I know. So I know. That's really, I like, that's very It's scary, too. I know. No, it's awesome. I'm, I'm seeing here, Rob, and I'm, I'm bookmarking, and I'm going to show them how to do all this later. I'm bookmarking the sites that you're mentioning to mm -hmm. the Global Education Conference resources in Digo. I'm shooting it out over Twitter, and and I'm you know and your call is showing in the right hand corner as we look at all these different things. Um, out of here, this is our last question, um, and yeah. then and then I'll let you get some sleep. And I'm, I'm by the way, I'm recording this too, so we can put it up in the name for people. I've I've got I'm to not ask your permission. Tomorrow, so it's okay. 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 Um, what are you, what are some of your favorite outside resources? Tool wise, uh, global education resource wise, like this Journey North one, you know, is is Bob, right? Uh -huh. Bob's resource here. What are some of your favorite things like this? Uh, I have to admit that I'm kind of um, kind of like to do my own sort of thing. Okay. So in terms of, um, I've sort of focused on the student creation side of things. Okay. In terms of um, teaching mathematics, there is a. Um, I'll just put it into the chat. Uh, there is a, um, a math site that's uh, made done by Cambridge University that really focuses on um, uh, sort of problem solving uh, strategies that students can develop. Uh, oh, nice. I'm just mm -hmm. trying to think.
what tools do you, um, do you like on the student creation side? Um, we use a lot of video. Um, I'll just see if I can bring up an example for you. So what we've been doing is, um, particularly for the mathematics, we've been doing screencasting. So um, uh, students, rather than doing a worksheet, they're able to um, complete a maths problem and actually talk it as they're writing it. And so you've got a record of the students' um, understanding and, and as they're doing it. As my wife says, it's the closest way to, closest thing to being inside their head. Okay. So you can really get a good appreciation of um, of how they they are thinking while they're doing that particular activity. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, screencasting has been uh, a big part of what we do. Um, what else have we done? Yeah, I like I like kids producing stuff rather than than passively consuming things too. And yeah, I'm, I'm not saying we don't, but um, I, I guess our focus has been really this sort of the global education side of things, really connecting kids to other individuals. Okay. Uh, I think with blogging you can do a lot, and, it, and it's an easy in for most teachers because it's about writing. Okay. This has been awesome, Rob. Uh, I thank you so much for doing this and for staying up late. Not a problem. It, it, it's, can I throw a yeah, quick yeah, question yeah. in there? Um, yeah. Is there an equivalent to Writers Club for slightly younger grades, like fourth and fifth yeah. grade? Uh, Writers Club goes down to second grade. Oh, okay. Okay. So we've had um, okay. some second grade kids um, from uh, the US and from Shanghai who have been on there. We don't have kids as young as that, but really, again, we wanted to keep it as open as possible. So, what grade? Second grade through eighth grade, or like 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 seven year olds to thirteen year olds? Um, even further, I think we we go up to eleventh grade at the moment. Okay. 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 Um, with that, with that kind of Broadness, mm -hmm. there there comes into the point where presumably the older kids may write some very excellent stuff, which simply may not be appropriate for the younger kids. Are there yeah. are there filters in the system so that you could say, can I just see works by say people up to grade six or something? Uh, yep. If you, um, I don't know whether you're still looking at that home page, yeah. but um, yeah. under members, oh sorry, on the home page it says find an author. Uh, it's the blue right. square in the top okay, left-hand yeah. corner. Yeah. And you can search by country, ah. by school, and by grade. Nice. So I can, I can <laughs> just look at grade two authors or grade three authors oh, or, or things like that. Um, you we just make got it, yourself um, <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I didn't catch that. He's got, got yourself a member. Yeah, they're, they're joining. Yeah. They're ready to sign oh, up. Yeah. Wow. We don't start, though, until August, so... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm going to have a tidal wave. Um, of, of <laughs> yeah, because I'll be talking about you at two different conferences, and so. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. We'll have we'll have to like I'll have to make you get up in the middle of the night again. <laughs> but I'm yeah, glad no I'm glad I recorded this. Any wife. Do you have a um, you have a question? Another question? Yeah, I did yeah. have a question, Rob, about um, any opportunities or sites or organizations um, in terms of. Uh, teaching art or any kind of initiatives, opportunities to connect with other art teachers around art education. Yeah, have you seen anything similar around art? I haven't actually, and I guess um, art isn't really my field. But I, uh, one thing I want to um, point out with this Writers Club, another reason why we picked writing was that it, can be, it is so broad that writing could really be anything. It could be a, pe a piece of art. It There's could, no reason yeah. why students couldn't put their artwork up on the Writers Club and have it commented on by students and have that audience as well. Um, you know, a, a writing could be a science report. Uh, so we deliberately picked writing because A, everybody's it's just doing it, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, but B, it could, it could be anything. So if your passion is science, you can get your kids sharing, you know, their science investigations. Um, uh, on the Writers Club, you'll see uh, the school in Mexico are right into video. So most of their stuff hasn't been through writing as in text. It's been through video. It could be a podcast. It could be a piece of art. It could be anything. So really, the Writers Club, it's, it's just a Trojan horse for connecting kids. Is it so if you want that audience, I think, you know, sign your students up and put their art on the Writers Club. 
Are the are the posts tagged by keyword like art? So if, if her students went in there and they wanted to find other art write, pieces of art writing, could they find uh, it? Not at the moment, but that's always something we could set up. Okay. I'm also... I mean, one, sorry. Uh, yeah, um, go. Keep one going. Of the, one of the things that I've been really pleased about is that it, uh, our, the vision for this site is that I take on the ideas of other teachers. So um, quad blogging was something that I hadn't heard of until Pony from... Uh, Colorado suggested that this would be an ideal platform to do that with. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm looking at my links here. This is where, if people bookmark uh, in the group that I have in Digo, then mm -hmm. it will show up on the front page of the Global Ed Ning. Um, and I just did a search for art. And um, and I'm looking for some things. There's there's not a lot in here, but this this particular um, I know there are some people in the Ning that are our teachers. There's a group of Apple Distinguished Educators that have been working on collaborative projects. And remind me, and I'll send you their names. But they they did a a light painting project that was pretty cool. Um, and one of them is an international school teacher, and another one's in California. I think he was he just got some big award, like California Teacher of the Year or something. Um, and they, so there's some things that are existing. Okay. 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 Any other questions before we sign off and take a break? Okay. All right, Rob. So I'll let you get some sleep. Um, Thank you. This was fabulous. Everybody's, everybody's uh, clapping, waving. Yay! There we are. So this has been really great, and tomorrow's session, I'm doing this workshop again tomorrow, um, and I'm not going to make you get up, but I, I, I'll have a nice recording to, to show everybody instead. So um, if you don't mind, I will also post this to the Ning so that everybody can get an idea, because I think people I think people, people don't read in the Ning so much, um, but if they see a video, I think it might be more effective. So this is your, your living, breathing, perfect example of what we want teachers to be doing. So thanks, Rob. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity, and I, and, um, I hope that you're able to um, use our site to be able to connect globally. Okay, I hope they join, and uh, we'll, 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 see, we'll see you online for the Global Ed Conference for sure again. Not a problem. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Lucy. Thanks.